G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs. And in today's video, we're going to install the new water bath and slats into the plasma table. And I'll just show you what we've got here. Now, this is the new water bath that I've got. It's um, 1500 by 1500. It's uh, 100 mil sides and it's made out of three mil plate it's just been cut and the sides have been folded i've still got to weld these edges up there's four edges to weld up and these are the slat frames and what these slat frames are is a piece of um, three mil flat that's been cut with a plasma not me um, i'd just like to thank luke from swags engineering in rockingham now he he got the sheet for me he's cut it folded it and he's folded these out of 3 mil. that's 50 wide, 75 high, put the slots in every 50 millimetre centres, and the slots are too deep, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something, a plate across, oops, I'm going to put a plate down here to actually give me a 25 mil deep slot, and, the, and then the slat will fit above this by 25, which should give me a level finish. And I've got, th I've got three of these, just need to be flattened, they're a little bit wobbly in here, but that's okay. And what we've done is you can see the, the gap between the front of the plate and this one is that far and the middle one it's, it's less and then this, the third one is wide again. So what it let me do is the slats I'm using, here's one I prepared earlier. Now these slats are 50 by 3 flat bar and they'll go on their edge. And if I can just demonstrate this, it, it fits in there, through there and comes around to there. So that slat in place is actually curved. It's sitting too low, as I said, but they're going to have to come up and I've got to put a plate across them to, to hold them up. So the idea being that they're curved, so when your torch is running up and down and you're doing a, a cross cut, you're not actually running, the torch is not running parallel across here all the time. If it cuts across here, it'll actually miss it. So that's the idea. I'll just show you on the table the current setup we've got without the water table in. You can see why we need this uh, water pan. So over here on the table, all right, so here's the table. <laughs> At the moment, I've got a four inch deep sides here. As you can see this frame and this bottom frame here is what the water pan will sit on all the way through here. At the moment, I just got some, some 100 by 100 box to fill up the gap and just clamps bits of plate on. But as you can see by the mess under here, this is where all the slag and the the sparks and fumes and offcuts go, so it makes a hell of a mess in my shed. So by having the water table in here, it'll eliminate all this, eliminate all this mess on the floor. Hopefully it'll eliminate a lot of the, the dust that's in the air as well. So and one other thing I need to do is install a drain and a valve in the bottom of the water pan so we can drain it out. Now this frame is 1600 internal by 1600. So the pan is only 1500 by 1500 way more than I need but I wanted to a little bit oversize in case I, I needed that so that's the reason we went that size now the remember from the previous videos this torch assembly has a cutting area of 12 or oh, 1340 is the max I can go on this on this uh, gantry so a sheet of steel standard sheet is 2400 long 1200 wide so I've got more than enough just giving a little bit of extra room all right so the first thing to do I think is to um, get these slat frames the sit level. So I've got the slat frames here on the welding bench and as you can see there's a bit of a gap under there so all I'm going to do is clamp down one side, uh, put a little packer under the middle and then squeeze the other side down and we can just just slowly bend this to the right shape to get it nice and flat. Now that I've straightened the three uh, slat frames what I've done now is I've I need, as I said before, I need a 25 mil um, here's the slat, this, this is pretend the slat, so this is the slat that fits in here so it sticks in 25mm into the slot, protrudes 25mm above the, the, the slat frame. So what I've done here is I've measured off the back, this is 30mm in this case, this is a piece of 20mm flat bar, so from the back edge to the top edge there is, is 50mm, gives me 25 there. So all I've done is I've just got my uh, combination square, I've dialed it in 30mm on the back edge, so now if I, if I go off the back side of that and line up that piece of flat, I've gone all the way along. 
So now it's just a case of just, just spot welding this in place all the way along and I'll get on to do that. Now I'll do all three, I, I won't show you all three being welded, I'll just get on and do that now and show you when I've finished. Alright, so now I've welded this piece of 20 by 3 flat bar along the edge of the slat frame. So that gap now is 25mm. So when the slat fits in here into this slot, it'll protrude 25mm, which will actually make it flush with the top of the water pan. So I've just installed the first slat again, and as you can see now, it's sitting in the slot and it's pretty much level with the top of the pan and now it's just a matter of cutting the rest of the slats and and just lining them all up but I'm not going to put them all in yet I'll just go and cut them then I'll weld the pan work out where the um, drain socket's got to go it's probably going to be down there in that back corner um, just got to work out where the braces are on the tables don't put that right in the way so that'll be the next thing and I'll just show you after it's welded in whether when the sockets in all the sides are welded and when we're ready to actually drop it into the into the table so that shouldn't take long now that all the slats are cut uh, I need to drill a hole in here and I'm going to put this uh, inch socket and I'll weld it in so it's it's flush at the top hanging underneath now, I've just measured that with my vernier, and it says it's 40 mil. So, into the trusty hole saw kit, and I've got a, this is inch and a half or 38 mil, so it's probably a slightly bit smaller, but that's okay. What I'll do is I'll drill the hole, and I might just, just machine the, the outside edge of this. I want to get that galvanizing off anyway to weld it. So I'll drill the hole first and just machine this to fit the hole nicely. So that's the next job. Uh, here's the um, socket I'm going to weld in. If you can see closely there, I've actually put a little shoulder on that in the lathe. And what that does now is I put it in from underneath. You can see it sits nice and flush. And I'll weld that in there now. And I've also got to go around and weld all these um, sides up. And I'll weld all those in one hit. So I'll weld all them and I'll be ready to put in the uh, plasma table. Well, that was rather timely. I was just about to work out how I was going to lift this pan in here. And my uh, mate Reese turned up. So uh, we've dropped it in. Now this tray, as I said before, is 1500 wide. The inside of the table is 1600, so I've got a small gap here. Same at the back. The torch doesn't actually travel that far back. Um, I've just lined these slat frames up and just dropped a couple of slats in to see how it is, how it looks. This is a little bit loose, I don't like that, so I'm actually going to just put a couple of little tack welds, not much, just a couple, just to hold that in place. And one more thing I've done around the back, you can see here there's a gap at the back, but that's okay, the torch doesn't come this far. What I've also done is here, I've welded this little tab on with a hole. Now the idea of that is I'm going to earth, run an earth strap from the water table down to this common earth point that I've got so one cable comes out of the plasma cutter the other one is my is my ground clamp that goes onto the piece I'm also got a spare hole here I'm now going to run a cable from there up and bolt it to here so in the unlikely event that I was to forget to clamp the earth clamp onto the piece of metal I've still got a, a good grounding through here so all right that's the next thing to do is um, line up these slat frames just put a tack, sort of like front, middle and, and back, and I'll put all the um, slats in. And the other thing I've done too is I welded that socket, this drain socket. I'll just show you under here. So we've got this 
we've got this drain socket under here, if you can see that in the dark. I'll put a nipple and a ball valve in here and then we can, we want to drain it, we can, we can open that. So, alright, I'll, I'll get going and I'll take those frames in and put all the slats in and show you how it looks when I'm finished. Well, I've put all the slats in now and really, really pleased with the way this has come out. Yeah, there's a nice bow in those, so any cut going straight across the table isn't going to pick up the edge and continue to burn it. And I did these slat frames, I did put a tack weld each end, just in a bit, and you see there's a tack weld there and one at the other end. And I'll just put a spirit level on this and show you what it looks like. All right, let's put this fancy pants spirit level across there. There you are. I hope you can see that. I reckon that's level. <laughs> it's pretty good in my book. What are we? Down 0.05 of a degree. I really think the torch height controller will probably grab that and pick it up and work on it all right. There you go, that's just across the table. And just if I can get it to rest across a couple of these slats here, see how that looks. 0.05 of a degree off. I, I, I don't even think you'd see that. All right, look, I'm really, really happy with that. Just need to put the torch back on. I took the Z axis unit off completely. I didn't want to get it caught up. Just got to put the bung and the drain plug in the bottom, connect that earth strap, and I reckon we can have a crack at putting some water in it. All right, I'll just uh, tidy a few bits up and we'll start putting some water in it. Moment of the truth time, let's hope it doesn't leak. All right, we'll just I've connected the fitting underneath. We'll just crack this. And we'll just put water in the bottom through that bottom um, drain bung. And... Well, now the water table's filled to within oh, maybe four or five mil of the top. Um, so far, no leaks, which is a really good sign. Bit of, a, bit of a shame if my welds didn't hold. Uh, all right, so I suppose the next thing to do now is to cut something and see how it goes. Um, I'm concerned now that the water level being level with the edge I'm going to slop water on the floor, <laughs> so... Alright, let's, um, I've got a design I need to cut anyway, so I think we might set a sheet of uh, 16 gauge plate up on the table, and we'll plug in the laptop, and we'll cut something and see what sort of a mess we can make. So here's the uh, design I've got to cut out, it's a street number for a client, um, the number th that's 180 high, 80 mil wide and we'll cut this and we'll just see what sort of reaction we get from the table and the water and, and see if we can see if, whether there's any less smoke coming out and, and... Oh. <laughs> all right I'll just tell it that we're over here this is the uh, project start point which is there on the job okay let's hit the start Well here is that piece, I've just taken it out of the cutter and just looking at the back, it's still got build up on the back but it, that's typical of, that, uh, of the uh, cut speed and the amps I've got and it cleans up really easily with a wire brush. So yeah, all in all, the, pretty pleased with the, the table, also impressed that the water catches so much of that uh, residue and smoke and fumes that you've seen in previous videos when I was first building the table and making my first cuts. Yeah, definitely a winner in terms of needing to have the water table to catch all those fumes because you certainly don't want to be breathing them. And just a final comment, I've noticed now I've just taken that number 36 sign and went to clean the dross off the back of it and it just chips off. So I'm thinking that the water 
is cooling it down so it's actually quenching it quicker and it doesn't actually have a time to ball up in a molten slag and then stick to the metal. So that's another side benefit that, that, that's a good thing to have. Well, as you can see from that video of the, the cut using the waterbed now in place, there was a whole lot less smoke, fumes, dust, everything that, that, had, that had previously been filling my shed and making a mess of my desk and all over the table. So you really do need a water table and, and this was part of the, the finishing touches to, to putting my table together. And now that we've got it in, I, I think that the benefits of having it far outweigh not having one, especially from a health perspective as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, a, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button is down here. And if you haven't seen the video series for the, uh, the, the build we did of the, the plasma table, I'll put a link somewhere up here. And if you'd like to click on that, you'll take you to the video series. And just a shout out once again to Luke from Swags Engineering. Uh, I gave him some drawings and said this is what I want for my water table and he was able to cut it out for me, fold the sides and gave me some suggestions about placement for the uh, slat frames. So thanks again Luke. I'll put Luke's details in the comments below if you, if you want to uh, have any engineering or any machine work you might want done, uh, please, please check him out. So if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments below. I'll certainly get to answer all your questions and comments. Okay, so that's it for this video and we'll see you in the next one.